what would you say to founders that perhaps don't want to be the face of the brand or perhaps are worried um, around kind of even if, if their face is too strong, they might not be able to sell that company, you know, and then you had an incredible exit. Like what, what's your take there? Uh, that, by the way, no one has ever asked me that question. And that is such a brilliant question because it is so important. Um, I knew exactly what you're saying, Nathan, that like if we were too heavily key person dependent, right, we would never be able to be acquired or, or, or really truly have some, something that was, was sellable or even scalable in a lot of ways. And so two things. The first part of that question, I think it's perfectly fine if you're a founder and you want nothing to do with being the face of the brand. I think it's perfectly fine to find someone who can be if you need that as part of your company. And how you do that. So I did this. I did that in my own company and I did it very differently, actually, than most people do. Um, so I'll share that piece in a moment. If you're like a founder, that's like, how do I find you know, someone who's the perfect face for the brand. Um, but I do think you can do it that way, find someone else and have it be fully authentic and have it be really powerful. You can find more than one person also. Um, I knew early on, and this is a lot, this is a big blind spot for so many founders, which I am just, I'm fired up that you asked that question and realizing no one's ever asked that question. Um, this is such a big blind spot for founders because they don't realize their business is them, <laughs> which is not a business, but you know what I mean? But yet they're burnt out. A lot of times when your business is all you, you're burnt out, all of the things, right? And, and so, um, and, and when you're having great success, especially success masks a whole lot of problems and a whole lot of inefficiencies, right? And key person dependency is one of those. And so early on, um, there were a couple things that, that we did. Um, and one of them was realized really quickly, like, oh, you know, cause, cause after the moment we just talked about when, when we had the big sellout of everything and all the stuff, you know, that, that one airing turned into five that year, 101 the next year, and eventually 250 live shows a year. There's only 365 days a year. That's a whole lot of time. And what was tricky was, and I was so burnt out by the way, doing hundred hour weeks plus like trying to do everything else, right? So we were scaling. And even though we were hiring rapidly, we were trying to, you know, preserve our culture as we were hiring, I was still trying to myself sign off on every, every element of copy, write every story, every, every product name, create, you know, all the stuff, like a billion moving parts, not to mention all the other departments we were building out. Um, so that's all going on. I was burnt out for a number of years. Yet what was happening was QVC, um, who was our biggest channel for a long time, um, you know, they have a history of where when the founder steps off there and someone else goes on, that other person doesn't hit numbers. And all of a sudden the brand starts going down. So they did not want me to have anyone else go on. So there was this big pressure for a long time where we were dependent on them right? So we had a business for a number, for, for a few years that was key person dependent on me going on air all the time, but then it was key channel dependent <laughs> on QVC. So it was a double, double negative in terms of uh, a healthy business. And so the good thing is, you know, we identify that really early and, and, you know, after, you know, and it wasn't for lack of trying, everyone else just said no forever. But eventually all of our success on QVC, other channels started wanting us, all of the department stores, all the beauty retailers. And I did an infomercial that aired in, in the United States and it was on while I was sleeping. So I was like, okay, we're selling product while I'm sleeping. This is great. So we had all these moving parts, um, but we still had the problem that it was key person dependent on me. So. What I did, which was, I think, very different than what most people would do, because um, I've seen a lot of other founders, in the, the, like especially on QVC, they'll hire someone to take over their role, but they'll hire someone that is like a master at sales, or they come from, they poach them from another company because they're a superstar there, or whatever it might be. With that idea that you cannot fake authenticity and that customers are smart, 
I did it totally different. I took three people inside my organization who their lives were authentically changed by the product, like, like full evangelists, but they'll tell their neighbor at the coffee shop, <laughs> like, like, but their lives were authentically changed by the product. I took three people internally and I taught those people who had the authenticity piece. I taught them the TV and the sales piece. And it took a number of years. They, they started traveling to all my shows. Um, we were on in Canada as well in the shopping channel then. They would go to my US shows. And for three years, they shadowed me at every show as I taught them all of it, started putting them on air in Canada where the, the, um, the sales goals were lower. Like you wouldn't get kicked off right away. <laughs> if you missed a, you know, in the US, you get kicked off right away. Um, and then eventually those three women uh, took over uh, the entire QVC business for me. And I had my head of marketing doing press for the brand instead of me for a while. And basically I did everything I could. This is the big takeaway for, for every founder. This intuitively feels scary, but when you can figure out how to replace yourself in every part of what you do the best you can, that's the healthiest your business will be. That's the most sellable your business will be. And, you know, you have to take your ego out of it. <laughs> A lot of people are like, I am not replaceable, <laughs> which is true for every founder. You really can't fully replace you. But the more you can show that there is no key person dependency, because here's the thing, Nathan, you know, we met with L'Oreal for, for three years and they said, no, we met with other people and they thought our business was too key person dependent. A lot of times that's the reason you won't ever be able to get past, you know, to get to the exit. And, um, and so we were able to solve that and, and able to show that the best we could I had become as irrelevant as possible um, to the business and that we had something that was scalable. Hey, Founder Fam, we hope that you loved that clip. If you did, you can click through right here to watch the full interview. You don't want to miss this one. See you there.